Hi everybody, Professor Gusini here. The purpose of this lecture is to help you set up your computational environment so that you can complete and submit homeworks and project assignments. So the first thing that we'll be doing today is obtaining access to and configuring your MSU GitLab account. Once you've navigated to gitlab.msu.edu, you can sign in to GitLab using your NetID username and your standard password. If you, for some reason, are unable to sign in to GitLab, please email ithelp at msu.edu and make sure you request GitLab access. I also suggest you CC me on that email. You should have already been added to CSEA 42's Fall 2020 Course Materials Project. And if you click the link for that project, you're going to access the location where all of the course materials for this class are maintained. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's a couple of folders here um, that are pretty self-explanatory in the way they're labeled. The homeworks folder will contain descriptions of the homeworks. Project folder will contain descriptions of the projects. Any recommended readings will be placed in the readings folder and so on. You don't have to actually carefully look through these folders because I will call out anything that's needed at any point in time through our course calendar, which is embedded within the README document that is displayed very conveniently below. So let's take a look through this README together. The README contains effectively hyperlinks to all of the course materials. Here at the top, I've provided two useful links, one to uh, the course syllabus, which you can click and you can see it just takes you, redirects you to a place within the GitLab repo that contains the paper copy of the course syllabus that we already discovered and discussed uh, in one of the earlier videos. You can also get information on what the project requirements for this class are by clicking on the link here. It will be called out later as well, but just so that you can see it and sort of poke through this at your leisure. Okay, the most important thing about these course materials is this course calendar section. You may recall that the course is divided into four quarters, roughly one month each, and that each of the weeks there's going to be a series of lectures that are posted along with a homework assignment and sometimes information about the project. What you can see here is that I've included hyperlinks to each of the videos that you can consume during this first week of classes. I've also included a link to the homework assignment and to some information on the project and what's going to be expected um, for the project in general, but then also um, for the first component that will become due on 927, as indicated down here. As the weeks go on, you will see that these Lecture blocks that are currently not clickable, there will be hyperlinks so that you can click on these. So just make sure that you're frequently checking back here on the course website to access materials as they get updated. So after you've had an opportunity to explore some of the course materials, the next step is for us to pull those course materials as well as your personal course repository onto your local machine. The way that we're going to do that is by use of the Unix terminal. If you don't have access to a Unix terminal, you can install a virtual environment that contains a Unix terminal or use one of the machines on campus for this component of the work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clone the repository that contains the course materials onto our local machine. If you access homework one, the instructions that I'm using to perform these are, are embedded within that first homework assignment. So you don't have to type these out if you don't want to. So what you can see is I ran git clone and I put in the address of our course materials and I got a, a message saying that it's done. If I list the contents of the directory, I can now see that everything that was within the course materials for the class website, there's now a local copy of this on my machine. The second command that we're going to run is 
a command to clone our personal directories for the course onto these machines. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to git clone my project directory. This is just for illustrative purposes. In your case, you would need to put your own net ID name instead of uh, Gassimi here. So if I clone this, you can see that I now have a copy of my project directory here as well. Now that we've pulled the repositories, the next step will be to initialize our course directories. So once again, if I list the contents of the current directory I'm in, I have the course materials, which is one repository that we already went through. And then I have a personal directory that will contain my contributions, submissions, and assignments to the course. So let's go ahead and move to my directory here. You'll notice that there's nothing inside of it. If I type ls minus l, it's just a completely empty directory other than a git file, which is going to be important for committing or submitting my homework assignments later. So coming back here to the main directory, once again, we have the course materials and my uh, personal folder. The thing that we're going to, to do is we're going to copy a setup script from the course materials utilities folder called setup.sh into our local directory. So now if I go to my folder again and I list the contents, you can see that the setup shell script is available. I'm going to change the permissions of this shell script so that we can run it on our machines. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run this setup script. A couple of things that this script does. The first thing is, as is mentioned up here in bold, we are installing the virtual environment package through Python's pip library. This is going to be important for a later step. And then the second thing we're doing is we're creating some submission directories just so that everything that you submit in the class is nice and organized. Now, if you list the contents of the directory now that we've gone through this whole process, you'll see that beyond just setup.sh, that script, we now have a folder for your final report. We have a folder for your homework, and we have a folder for the project. So let's navigate to the homework folder, for instance, and see that the contents of this directory has one folder per assignment. As you will see when you're working on homework zero, for example, these directories contain um, really two kinds of content. The first one is a requirements.txt document where you will store any Python kind of programmatic requirements you have. And then there is a materials folder where you'll store any supporting functions that are necessary to run your software. Recall once again that everything we submit in this course is in an IPython notebook. And therefore, the next step of this process is to figure out how we can install JupyterLab uh, so that we can create and use and edit IPython notebooks. So let's first start by clearing our screen, and then we'll move to that part next. OK, so. Our next step is to install JupyterLab and to open a notebook. To prevent any kind of conflicts with local installations of JupyterLab you may have or other kinds of Python packages, we will be doing everything within a virtual environment. You may recall earlier that the setup.sh script that we ran installed the virtual environment package within Python. So the first step that we'll need to do to create a virtual environment is to simply run virtual env and then we give that virtual environment a name. Let's call it vn. Now what you can see here is that the virtual environment is being created and it's done. So if I list the contents of the directory, I now in addition to the materials and requirements.txt have a virtual environment directory. The way that I activate or use that virtual environment so that I can install Python packages specifically to that 
ecosystem is through using the source command. So you say source and then you navigate through the virtual environment to bin, activate, and voila, your virtual environment is activated. The way that you know it's activated is because you can see here on the left hand side that in parentheses there is the word VENV. This means that the environment that I'm going to be pulling from for anything related to Python 3 activities is going to be things that were installed in this virtual environment. Okay, great. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and install JupyterLab within the virtual environment. So I'll do pip install minus r the requirements.txt. This minus r command just says read whatever's in requirements.txt, which we filled out earlier, and go ahead and install that using pip. <clears throat> Okay, perfect. It looks like it's installing. Yes, it's installed correctly, so no issues. So all that's left to do is to open the JupyterLab application by simply typing J-U-P-Y-T-E-R-Lab here on the command line. And as you can see, it very conveniently opens up the JupyterLab notebook instance that I can operate and interact with here on my web browser. Now, JupyterLab is pretty great because you can see that I can now navigate this visually the way I would with uh, a user interface, and I can do some great things, like I can, for example, come here and create a notebook. And I can, instead of keeping this notebook named untitled, I could, for example, very easily, by right-clicking, rename this to maybe Submission, for example. <clears throat> and Jupyter Notebooks or IPython notebooks more specifically, allow you to do two kinds of actions. The first one is you can either write code within a given cell of a notebook, or you can write markdown. And this is what makes uh, these notebooks so, so nice to work with. So let's put markdown, for instance, and uh, let's say I wanted to put a primary heading. I put one of the hash keys, and I say, this is my primary heading. And if I run this cell now using the play button, you can see that I get a primary header that gets placed here. If I come here and I wanted to put just some regular text, this is some regular text. I can run this as well. And now you can see that some regular text appears. Now, because of the way that this is structured, I can interleave not only this markdown content, but I can also then put Python code in the cell that follows this. So I can say some variable, for instance, and let's give this, um, let's make this a string. So let's say CSE 842 has started. Okay, now when I run this by pressing the play button, or you can hit on your keyboard as a shortcut shift enter, which is what I like to personally use, this cell has been run. So if I wanted to display the contents of that variable, I can do some variable, run it, and you can see that the string gets displayed. Okay, so this is, this is really neat, right? Because you can take Python code or scripts and you can embed them within documents effectively. And this is the way that you will be preparing and submitting your homework assignments for the purpose of this class. So um, you could come here, for example, and change this one again to markdown, and we could say here, you know, homework assignment is coming due, or something foreboding like that. And you can see it, it again shows up here. Okay, great. Well, I showed all this to you because when I say that you'll be submitting IPython notebooks, this is what you will be submitting. And as you edit here within the web browser, if you return back to the terminal now, which we'll do together, you can see that the Jupyter Notebook instance is running. Let me go ahead and exit that Jupyter Notebook instance because we've, we've completed, I think, writing this for the purposes of a tutorial. I'm going to shut down the server. Okay, and we're back. I'll clear this just so that there's less on the screen. And you can see if I list now, submission.ipythonnotebook is now within the homework zero directory. So let's say that 
that homework zero submission was in fact what I was interested in submitting for the purposes of my project or for my homework or whatever other assignment we had. The way that you go about submitting this assignment is using git. More specifically, you will run the following commands. You'll say, first, I want to add everything that's within this folder. So you do git add dot. And then if we run that command, you're going to see that there is no error. So that means that the git repository has now added these new files. We can then commit those and add a message. So you use minus M for message. And let's say um, adding an example submission. In your case, this message might be submitting homework one or updating project code or something like that. So let's go ahead and, and run this. You can see that it tells us what's being written and rewritten, insertions, deletions, etc. So that's all great. Now, when you want to finally send it off to the website, all you have to do is run git push. And it will give you a handy percentage that tells you how that's gone and finally notify you that it's been pushed back to that very repository you see here that we pulled from. So one thing we can do now is coming back, coming back here, I can come back to GitLab and if I come under my, or if I come under my groups page, you can see that there's a, a different project for each of you in the course. So when any of you submit an assignment, the contents that you submit will show up here and I'll be able to access, review, and give grades, etc. You can also see that for the purposes of the tutorial that we just completed, if I click my own username where I just submitted, and I come here to homework and homework zero, you can see it says that, hey, there was an update to this uh, a minute ago, a minute ago, and um, this requirements.txt I actually created it earlier, which is why it says 19 hours ago. But submission.py is available here, and here's what's really handy about it. I can click it and just review everything that you kind of created and submitted directly within the website itself. I can leave comments, um, create issues, etc. So this is the way that you will be creating your assignments and submitting them to the course website. If you've understood everything up till now, you should have everything you need for most of the logistical elements of the course.